الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salat wa salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have to remember the ni'mah and the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to Islam and that he has guided us to the sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has allowed us to live to see another Ramadan. This is a ni'mah that is azimah bila shak wa bila rayb. This is a tremendous bounty and a tremendous opportunity for those who will take advantage of this opportunity and strive to reap its rewards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in his noble book, Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O humanity, O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and who created those who came before you in order for you to attain piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah, he makes it very clear for mankind that the only road to piety is the road of ibadah, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing properly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, submitting oneself unto Allah jalla wa'ala. This is the only road to piety. So it's not possible for any individual to claim anything from piety if they are not worshipping their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their Lord who created them Allah Ta'ala, He created us and those who came before us in order for us to attain this piety. So if we want to be pious, then we have to be serious about the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if we abandon the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then we will never be pious. And if we do not worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala correctly, then our path to piety, it will be impeded. We will be affected negatively due to not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. So it's important that we know and that we understand this, that sins, they have evil repercussions. And from those repercussions is that they will impede an individual's attainment of piety. Not worshipping Allah ta'ala correctly has repercussions. And from them is that it will impede an individual's road to piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum musiyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Allah ta'ala, he says, O oh, you who believe, here in this ayah, addressing the believers specifically, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who came before you in order for you to attain piety. So fasting, bila shak bila raib, that it is a path for the attainment of piety, but only if it is done correctly. An example of this, on how we can do something, and it could be a path to something else, but if it is done incorrectly, then we will not achieve the objective. We will miss the mark. Allah Ta'ala, he says about the salah, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That verily the salah, that it prevents an individual from lewdness, lewd behavior, lewd actions and evil despicable deeds and from sin. But you find that there are individuals who pray five times a day and they pray their sunnas and they may pray witr 
and they still commit acts of lewdness and they still commit evil sins. Why? It is because their prayer is not correct. So this is why their prayer is not preventing them from these actions, these evil and lowly actions, because it's not correct. So likewise, if we fast, but our fast is not correct, then it is not going to have the desired effect. So an individual can fast Ramadan, but still, oh, what a shame. Ramadan and the fasting of Ramadan is not like other things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in a hadith, hadith that is mutafiqun alayh, min hadith Abi Huraira, that, that is collected in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, that all of the actions of the son of Adam, then they are for him, except for fasting. It is for me, and I shall reward him for it. So fasting is different. In another narration, Allah Ta'ala, he says, he leaves off his desires and his food for my sake. So leaving off the desires and the food for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is required. And I want you to understand, it is not just mentioned leaving off food. It's not just mentioned leaving off food and drink. But also that he leaves off his lowly desires for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the enters into that more than just copulation with one spouse. Fasting is not like other things. And Abi Sa'id al Khudri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, fi hadith rawahu al Bukhari wa Muslim, hadith al Mutafiqun alayhi. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma min abdin yasumu yawman fi sabirillah, illa ba'ad Allahu. بِذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَجْهَهُ عَنِ النَّارِ سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفًا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that there is not a single slave who fasts one day, a day, one day, in the path of Allah, except that Allah will remove that person's face due to that day, 70 years, seven zero. 70 years away from the fire for one day. Some of the ulama, they mentioned that this hadith is, is specific about those who fast when they are fighting jihad. Others from the ulama, they say, although it enters into it, that meaning it is more broad. So it means anyone who fasts any day in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that their face will be removed from the fire 70 years. So we fast in Ramadan 29 or 30 days. It is a must that we make sure that that fast is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As it comes in a hadith on the authority of Abu Huraira and Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man sama imanan wa ahtisaba gufr lahu ma taqaddam in dhambi That whoever fast Ramadan out of iman and anticipation of the reward, all of their previous sins will be forgiven, meaning from their minor sins. Ramadan is not like other times. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَمَنْ قَامَ Ramadan, إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفْرِ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That whoever stands the nights of Ramadan out of Iman and anticipation of the reward, all of their previous sins, meaning minor sins, will be forgiven. وَقَالَ نَبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْءٍ مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفْرِ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ And whoever stands the night of Qadr out of Iman and anticipation of the reward, then all of his previous sins will be forgiven. So this time frame is not like other time frames. But people don't benefit from it in oh what a shame. We have to do our deeds sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do them correctly upon the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we seek to be positively affected and impacted by our deeds. And if we are not doing them correctly or we are not doing them sincerely, then they're not going to count to begin with and we're not going to see the desired effect. And as so much as our deeds could be sincere but not upon exactly the right way, that it will be affected 
and our reward, it will be diminished. And this is why a person can fast all of Ramadan, but still, oh, what a shame. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث رواه بخاري البخاري قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل به وفي الرواية والجهل فليس لله حاجة فليس لله حاجة أن يدع طعامه وشرابه. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said what means that whoever does not abandon evil statements and actions in according to evil, evil statements, false statements, falsehood, and actions that are a falsehood and evil. And in one narration it mentions an ignorance leaving off acting in a most ignorant of manners. That if a person does not leave these things, then Allah is in no need for them to leave their food and their drink. And this means that that individual who does these things, evil statements while they're fasting, still lying, still backbiting, still gossiping, still using profanity and speaking in a most ignorant of manners, still acting, in the most ignorant and evil of manners, still doing all types of sins and transgressions with their limbs, with their eyes, with their ears, with their tongue, then Allah is in no need for them to leave their food and drink, meaning that their reward will be diminished. Not that the fast does not count, the fast it still counts, but their reward, it will be diminished to the point where they may get nothing from their fast except for hunger, and thirst. This is real. It's not a joke. So we need to reflect upon the likes of this. Because this is why some people can fast all of Ramadan. But still, oh what a shame. Fasting. It is a means by way in which we acclimate ourselves to righteousness and good behavior. That we conquer the evil of our souls. The Salaf. وقال بعض السلف they used to mention أهون الصيام ترك الشراب الطعام they said that the lowest of fasting the bottom tier of fasting is just the leaving off of drink and food that's the lowest level but when we fast the desired effect is not just that we leave off food and drink no that's not it قال جابر رضي الله تعالى عنه إذا صمت فليصم سمعك وبصرك ولسانك He said when you fast then you cause and you make fast your hearing your hearing has to fast your sight has to fast and your tongue has to fast one of the poets he mentions, he says, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ He says, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي السَّمْعِ And if there is not inside of my hearing, I want you to pay very close attention. فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي السَّمْعِ مُنِيٌّ وَفِي بَصْرِ غَضٌ وَفِي مَنْطِقِ صَمْتُ فحظي إذا من صوم الجوع والثمأ فإن قلت إني صمت يوم ما صمت. He said that if there is not an impeding factor, an impediment to my hearing, 
that impedes it from coming what? That impedes evil from coming to it. So a person not fasting, listening to music. A person not fasting, listening to haram. No. He said, if there is not inside of my ear that which will impede the haram from coming to it. If there is not inside of my sight, ghadbul basar. If there is not inside of my sight, ghadbun. Lowering of the gaze. Why? Because the eyes are not looking upon that which is filthy. Not looking upon that which is haram. If there is not inside of my speech, somtu. Quiet, silence. Well, silence, why? Silence from speaking haram. So they're not using their tongue to lie. They're not using their tongue to cheat. They're using their tongue to, to curse people and do these evil speech and things like this. He said, فَحَضِّي إِذَنْ مِنْ صَوْمِ He said, then my portion of fasting for that day, it will be nothing except hunger and thirst. And even if I said that I fasted this day, I really didn't fast. Why? Because the desired effect of fasting is to control the self, is to gain conquering over the self, to conquer one's lowly desires. But if you're fasting and still indulging in that which you should be avoiding, then you're not going to attain the objective. You're not going to get near unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like you think you're going to get near unto Allah jalla wa'ala. Imam Ibn Rajab, he mentions, في معنى الكلام الإمام, he mentions, he says, فاعلم أنه لا يتم التقرب إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى بالترك ما في غير الحالة, الحالة الصيام مباح إلا بالترك ما حرمه الله في كل حال He said that you're not going to complete drawing near unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by leaving all things that outside of fasting are permissible. Unless and until you also leave off those things that are haram all the time. You're not going to achieve the objective of drawing near unto Allah ta'ala until you leave off the haram. So now what sense would it make for an individual to fast Ramadan and they stay away from those things that are outside of Ramadan halal while indulging all of Ramadan even while fasting in the haram. You eat in haram all Ramadan. And I don't mean food that's not yani the biha, that's not what I mean. It's figurative. You're eating haram all Ramadan. Staying away from that which is halal outside Ramadan. This is why some people can fast all of Ramadan, but oh, what a shame. But Ja'af al Hadith, for Sharf al Muslim, that comes in a hadith that is on the conditions of Muslim, of Imam Muslim. Call Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Laysa suyam, suyam ala tu'am wa sharab. Wa innama suyam, suyam ala lahwi wa rafaf. Aw kama call Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that fasting is not staying away from food and drink, meaning the reality of fasting is not staying away from food and drink. But rather, the reality of fasting is gained but when one stays away from, in addition to food and drink, they stay away from vain, evil, lowly, and despicable speech, and they stay away from vain, lowly, despicable actions. That's how you're going to attain the reality of fasting. So if we want to benefit truly from the Ramadan, we, in addition to leaving off the food and the drink and compilation with one's spouse in the day, we have to leave off lying. We have to leave off cheating. We have to leave off verbal abusing. We have to leave off all types of filthy and evil speech. We have to leave off all types of filthy and evil actions. We have to leave off utilizing our hands in the haram. Leave off utilizing our feet to commit the haram. Leave off our ears committing haram. Leave off our eyes from seeing the haram. We have to fast on all of that. Your ears have to fast. Your eyes have to fast. Your tongue has to fast. Your, all of you as a person, you have to fast. It's not just your stomach. It's not just your stomach. But also those aforementioned things, your limbs, they have to fast by staying away from the haram. This will acclimate you to continue that and staying away from the haram when Ramadan has gone. This will acclimate you by doing that which Allah Ta'ala has commanded you in Ramadan to continue that once Ramadan has gone. So we have to 
take this seriously and listen because Allah Ta'ala, He says about Ramadan, أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتِ a fixed period of time. We are already on the second half of Ramadan. Half of it is gone. Half of it is gone. Half of it is gone. We ask Allah Ta'ala to allow us to benefit from the next half and that that half is better than the first half and that that half is better than any Ramadan we ever had in our life. So it is upon us to strive hard. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us all the success. والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة